If you tune into the debate over making the economy work for all Americans, you may hear of the trend of financialization. 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 Financialization describes how Wall Street has gained increasing power over our economy, hurting working families, white, black, and brown, while enriching a few at the top. Today, wages remain stagnant, public services have been cut, and the average American is carrying more debt than ever. Meanwhile, the big banks are even bigger, despite causing the 2008 crisis with their predatory behavior. But financialization goes even deeper. Here are a few examples of how Wall Street has increasingly dug its tentacles into American communities, especially communities of color. Since the financial crisis of 2008, the Blackstone Group and several other private equity behemoths have been buying up foreclosed homes and renting them out through subsidiaries. What's the problem with a private equity firm applying its shareholder first mentality to the rental business? Reuters reported, the picture that emerges is one of leaky pipes, vermin, toxic mold, non-functioning appliances, and months long waits for repairs. They're an absentee landlord at best. Blackstone tenants also face predatory fees. According to a recent lawsuit, an elderly Los Angeles woman who had fully paid her rent was threatened with eviction because she had $40 in unpaid fees. With more than 80,000 single-family homes across the U.S., Blackstone controls as much as a quarter of the properties in some neighborhoods. This means they can drastically raise their tenants' rents, knowing it'll be tough for them to find other housing options in their community. Biggest toy store. Let's go. Toys R Us delighted kids worldwide for nearly 50 years and built a majority female workforce that numbered more than 60,000 people. Then, in the mid 2000s, some private equity firms bought the company. They borrowed billions to finance the deal and said they planned to restructure Toys R Us to succeed in the era of Walmart and Amazon. With the purchase complete, they were able to put all that debt on the company's books rather than their own. After the financial crisis hit, Toys R Us faced skyrocketing interest payments on the loans. It limped on for a few years before finally declaring bankruptcy in 2017. The firms that bought it a decade earlier weren't liable for the debt, and in the end, they each made millions in net profits. As for the workers, they lost their livelihood. I'm with the company 20 plus years. This is my family. I'm 50 years old, I have to go look for a new job. Worse yet, they were denied any severance on the way out. It took the workers fighting back very publicly, enlisting the help of politicians to eventually get two of the firms to establish a small hardship fund. When a company generates profits, it can do a variety of things with the extra money. A sustainable business might divide its earnings among these priorities. But today, many American companies go a different route. They buy back their own stock on the open market, reducing the overall supply, which artificially inflates stock prices. Stock buybacks used to be viewed as market manipulation and were illegal prior to 1982. But buybacks by America's largest public companies have exploded in recent years. They exacerbate wealth inequality because the gains that result from the practice are concentrated among the already wealthy. As Rana Faruha wrote, they promote a hoarding of corporate value within the financial system itself. Buybacks are in most cases the very definition of financialization. These are just some of the many examples of how Wall Street is bringing its take the money and run approach to all corners of American life. Most dangerous, perhaps, is the effect on our democracy because they can offer an endless supply of campaign contributions to lawmakers. Wall Street firms hold incredible sway over our politicians. They threw their weight behind the 2017 tax bill and reaped huge financial rewards, plowing much of their windfall into stock buybacks. They also got the Republican Congress to roll back regulations designed to catch discriminatory lenders. Financialization is a vicious cycle. Wealthy special interests rig the system so they can continue extracting and hoarding wealth. They then try to divide us by pointing the finger for our hard times at poor families, black people, and new immigrants. But we can fight back. 
We can push for new laws to make financial markets fairer and safer. We can demand that regulators hold executives accountable when they break the law and prey on our communities. And we can build alternatives that invest in our communities and make us less dependent on Wall Street. Visit TakeOnWallStreet.org to learn how we build a financial system for working families, white, black, and brown, not the big banks.